Hello again friends, welcome back. My name is Oscar Montesiga. I'm a certified senior wine and spirits instructor for the International Wine and Spirits Guild. And thanks for joining me again here at the Booze Library of Uncork Vintage Academia. Today at the library we are going to be tasting um, a Texas single malt. Happy uh, Whiskey Wednesday and that's the reason why. I mean it's Wednesday, it's bound to be happy hour, sooner or later regardless where you be. So regardless of where you are, um, raise a toast to uh, Whiskey for Whiskey Wednesday, but also um, just wanted to give a shout out to a local distillery and a local group also. Um, the distillery is Balcones Distilling Company, and I'm going to be tasting their single malt. So it's a Texas single malt. However, this is from a, from a barrel pick, uh, barrel pick so this is a single barrel bottling and for um, exclusivity of the props um, guild in uh, Flugerville so the guys at Prost um, uh, props they actually took our fine spirits so me a seminar with the International Wine and Spirits Guild and uh, they brought a bottle of the single barrel to to share so this single barrel sits at 65.7 ABV. It is a Texas single malt. The barrel is 18253. It is uh, it was aged in uh, European oak, and it was distilled in 96 2017. It was bottled in 918 2020. So about 36 months of aging um, in the European cask, and this was bottled at cask strength. So single barrel cast strength, single malt from Texas. Um, and a shout out to the Props Guild for picking uh, a very nice single malt barrel. One feedback to the distilling company in that regard. Uh, it's awesome that you're allowing groups of people to do a barrel pick and to also bottle uh, single barrels. A word of advice, just for collector's sake, for for um, f for accountability, for inventory, whatever it may be. Um, my advice is that you allow uh, printing the number of bottles. So this would have been a bottle number so and so out of however many bottles from that single barrel, because that would be cool just to compare bottle variation if there was any uh, to talk about. So the feedback there for you guys. Um, but let's get um, straight to it. I'm tasting neat. And it is a clear whiskey. It is a medium copper center with a yellow ochre canary transition and a thin clear edge. Almost, um, yeah, it's a, a thin clear edge, but very beautiful copper colors of the prolonged uh, aging, even though it's not that long. So we're talking about about three years or so. It's not super long, but, you know, um, when you compare a three-year-old Scotch whiskey or Irish whiskey to a three-year-old Texas whiskey, um, our heat makes the whiskey aged a lot faster, just because... It's the nature of the beast. So in cooler climates, you're going to see less color because it's aging at a cooler um, temperature and at a slower pace. And in our heat of Texas, um, the whiskey will age faster. But very nice color. On the nose, my nasal impact is drying. And the most prominent things are citrus notes like orange, burnt orange, uh, orange zest, orange oils, and a lot of nuts, a lot of walnut, pecan, almond. There's some vanilla, there is burnt sugar, like a creme brulee with some custard. There is honey and light toffee and caramel. And also something slightly fresh, like savory fresh herbs, almost like thyme and thyme or sage a 
and uh, menthol. But the production intensity is adequate and simple. The aging intensity is well, adequate and complex. Its length is average and the character is fine. It has a nice persistent uh, character on the nose. Okay, let's give it a taste. The palate is very engaging, it is complex, um, and I think I get everything from an astringency to a coating to a, war a warming sensation on the palate, and there's not one m more evident or stronger than the others. Uh, I think there's a lot of astringency, a lot of warming, and a lot of coating going on at the same time on the palate. It's got sufficient towards generous and smooth towards rough alcohol. So nothing is out of balance. This, this alcohol still gives smoothness and um, it's just sufficient. It's not out of whack. It's not overbearing, overpowering. Um, but this is a full body whiskey. The primary taste is bitter, and there are very s uh, small highlights of sweetness and small highlights of sourness. But on the palate, the m prominent taste is bitterness, and it's got a, a buttery mouthfeel. Now, flavors on the palate, most of them actually mimic the nose. Um, I can still taste the walnuts and the pecans, uh, mostly on a shell variation as opposed to the actual nut. So there are a lot more bitter tannins, uh, more astringency on the palate um, that tastes more like this, the, the, the shell of the walnut or the pecan. But I can still taste the creme brulee, the burnt sugar, the vanilla. I taste the honey. The orange definitely becomes less fresh and I don't get so much the orange zest or oils as opposed to the burnt orange. So I taste more of the charred uh, orange profile. I still taste the toffee and caramel. And then the savory herbs become less pronounce and and less thyme and sage and menthol and become more like um, like um, caraway spice caraway seed spice and also a little bit of dill like dill pickle uh, but the dill fresh dill uh, the flavors are quite concentrated the complexity is complex and the balance is um, harmonious towards bold. There is something, and it's mostly the alcohol being the astringent factor, that gives you an edge, gives you some tension, but everything's still balanced. So it is harmonious, but there's boldness because of that tension. So overall balanced, but harmoniously bold. And um, the, uh, the finish is pleasant and very long you will taste them taste it for probably over 10 seconds and overall final impressions the impression of this single mall from Texas um, I'm gonna call it overall very good um, it is balanced there is tension there is complexity there's a lot going on in this whiskey and it's got um, a lot of flavor a lot of concentration but also, I guess my secondary feedback for the distilling company of Balcones and our friends watching, what is missing for me in this single malt is 
the actual malt. There's nothing on the nose that is telling me that it's a single malt whiskey. As far as like the raw material, and that's what I'm talking about, I don't really smell barley or, or taste it as much as you do in, say, Scottish or Irish single malts. So it's like the raw material gets lost in all the production and um, the production of élevage, the cellaring and maturation uh, treatment. Because on the nose and the palate, I have a hard time identifying uh, the malt. And I don't specifically state or know that it is 100% barley. Um, I don't know if they blended anything with it, but that fact aside is the fact that I'm not tasting uh, malt as a prominent um, organoleptic experience uh, or a tasting note on neither nose or palate um, it's what pushes this for me down from being an excellent whiskey to a, to a very good whiskey just because even though it's complex and balanced I am missing um, the fact that I'm having a hard time finding the the barley in the production method um, again it's a fun whiskey it's um, a whiskey that actually reminds me a little bit of some cognacs or, or older brandies because there's all that burnt sugar, vanilla, caramels and dark fruits, walnuts and pecans and so on that remind me of, of a, a cognac, especially because I'm missing the barley. I don't find the single malt on the taste profile. So with, all, with the barley away or hiding, what I'm left with is a whiskey that almost tastes a little bit like a cognac or or a type of brandy um, but that said again it, it is fun to try a, a single barrel single malt from Texas from Balcones Distilling Company and I think it's also a very nice seasonal sip for our winter season coming up because you could easily pair this with a nice walnut or pecan pie you could have um, a sip of it while you're munching on cheese and charcuterie boards. But most exciting uh, at the table as a pairing idea would be to pair this with wild boar or just exotic wild game. If you do maybe a little bit of venison or, or quail or bison, uh, some, some of those exotic meats um, properly cooked, I think that would be a master pairing for the Texas single malt of Balcones. Fun. I believe this bottling is sold out. This is again, it was bottled in uh, late 2020 and I'm sure the bottles are gone by now, but they do offer a single malt in the portfolio, so you can give that a shot if you like the tasting notes. But that aside, thanks for watching. Shoot me a comment if you have any questions about the Texas single malt or what would you like to taste next check out our videos for cocktails or other evaluations and I look forward to hearing back from you enjoy whiskey Wednesday and again thanks for watching my name is Oscar Montes Iga and certified bourbon steward and until next time friends cheers